Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a really quick video about a technique that I use when I have to deflate the endotracheal tube. Now, I don't know if I thought of it my, myself or other people have figured it out, but I know it's not uh, something at least when the students come to do their rotations that uh, they've heard about or that the teacher's spoken about. Uh, I, so yeah, I just want to share what I do when I have to uh, deflate the ET tube cuff. Now you know that there's the evac tubes that uh, have a suction port just uh, above the the cuff, uh, small orifice. Apply negative uh, pressure to it, and it suctions the secretions that are between the vocal cords and the cuff. This is uh, used to help reduce. Uh, ventilator associated pneumonias so um, it's normal okay so when are we deflating the cuff we're either deflating the cuff right if we're uh, repositioning an ET tube if we're doing a leak test and also when we're going to uh, extubate or we're going to tube exchange a, an endotracheal tube so obviously yeah we suction the the pharynx try and get as much secretions uh, out uh, of the pharynx and if you have the luxury of having a um, evac tube then you're gonna apply suction to the evac tube try and remove as much as possible the secretions above the tube just because you're doing uh, that with an evac tube, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of the residual secretions above the endotracheal tube uh, cuff are completely removed. So this is a technique that I use and uh, I just wanted to share it with you guys and you can feel free to comment and tell me what you think about it. So if you look at the endotracheal tube, yeah, you have the, uh, the amount of centimeters that are marked along the tube. If you have a inline suction, the same thing applies. There are centimeters marked all along the endotracheal tube. Now, if you look at the 26 centimeters on the ET tube, you start pushing in the, the inline suction catheter to 26 also. So if the 26 on the catheter and the ET tube line up well together, means that the suction catheter is just at the distal tip of the endotracheal tube. If you push it one centimeter further, so you have 27 centimeters of the inline suction um, catheter lined up with 26 centimeters, so 27 and 26, that means that it's gonna be one centimeter past the distal tip of the ET tube. So after you've suctioned the pharynx and you've suctioned uh, the evac, when before you start deflating the endotracheal tube, since that suction catheter is, is one centimeter just uh, past the endotracheal tube, as you start applying continuous suction as you deflate the cuff so that any residual uh, secretions that are above the cuff will fall and you have a better chance of catching uh, additional uh, secretions uh, and not allowing them to, to enter the lung. So that's just a small technique that uh, I kind of do myself. Uh, I thought it, you know, I've never heard of anybody else mentioning it, so I just wanted to share this in, in this short video. I'll the video, but um, all right, thanks so a lot, you've guys. got Bye. the centimeters here. You've got the centimeters on the suction inline. So you're going to put the 27 centimeters is going of the endotrach um, of the inline suction. The 27 centimeters is going to line up with the 26 centimeters. It's going to put it uh, one centimeter past the distal tip. Then you're going to, I mean, obviously pretend this is intubated. You don't have, actually have to hold the ET tube. You're going to apply continuous suction, and while you apply the continuous uh, suction, you're going to deflate the cuff so that any phlegm that slides down here that wasn't uh, evacuated from the evac will be caught here. So that's a little technique to, that I use and show the students just basically to get any residual secretions that are above the cuff so that they don't you know, go into the lung and you know, cause any infection or something related to the tube. All right, thanks guys.